A couple of years ago, we released a video talking about all of the targeting options available on Snapchat. If you watched that video, you know that some of those options were really cool because they were unique to Snapchat and you couldn't find them anywhere else on any other platform. Unfortunately, some of those options have gone away, but I still think that Snapchat is a highly valuable channel to reach your target audience. So today I wanna to run through the Snapchat targeting options available as of early 2022. The easiest way for me to highlight all of the targeting options on Snapchat is gonna be by going through a campaign setup and just clicking on all the buttons that are in the targeting section in the ad set setup. So we're in our demo account that we have for Snapchat. And I'm just gonna come down here to create campaign. To have full control, as Snapchat says, over the campaign, we're gonna click advanced create. The first thing we need to do is choose our campaign objective. And if you're interested in learning more about the Snapchat campaign objectives, we do have a video on that already that you can check out at the top of the video viewer right now. But for the sake of this run through, I'm just gonna select a very simple drive traffic to website campaign objective. Rather than going through the rest of the steps to set up the campaign, I'm just gonna do a shortcut and go to new ad set. We're only talking through the targeting options today, so the rest of it doesn't matter, and I'm not gonna launch this campaign. There are a handful of different targeting options we have within each Snapchat ad set. So to come down here, we need to scroll down, and the first option is going to be around placements. I'm not gonna spend too terribly much time on this because each placement does differ by campaign objective, but effectively the placement is where your ads will show to your audiences throughout the network that Snapchat has access to. You can see the automatic placement is recommended and that gives Snapchat the ability to serve your ad in any location across its network that it thinks it's gonna perform best to achieve your goals. But if you do wanna customize that, you can click edit placement and you can see here for a drive traffic to website campaign objective, there are a handful of different options. The first is going to be around choosing the content itself. You get to choose if your ad shows up between content or ads watched between stories and professional content. There are then two subcategories, user stories and publisher and creator stories. If you wanna limit your ads only to show in between the stories that are from your friends, you can choose just the user stories, but if you're willing to also have them run in between publisher and creator stories, you would check the box here. So depending on where you want your ads to show, make sure you've got the right check boxes in place. And the next is going to be within content. So ads watched within professional and curated content. The first section here allows you to either include or exclude certain categories of content. And then the selected categories are going to be pretty high level groups of things. We've only got a handful in here. Beauty and fashion, food, gaming, all the way down to women's lifestyles and young and bold, whatever that means. So if you wanted to include or exclude any of these specific categories, you could do that. One thing that comes to mind very quickly is if you want to exclude news content, that would probably be a very easy way to stay as apolitical as you can with your Snapchat ads campaigns. As I mentioned, all of the different placements differ by campaign and publishers is not a selected option for the goal that we have in place for this campaign, but you can choose to include or exclude certain publishers based on different campaigns objectives and different goals that you have. And then lastly is the audience network. This is going to be the group outside of Snapchat specifically that allows you to have additional reach, but there is a warning down here that the iOS and audience network could cause a little bit of issue with tracking transparency. Audience network impressions will rely on contextual signals for optimization where device-based targeting is not available. So just keep that in mind if you want to run on the audience network, but for the sake of this, I'm just going to turn it back to automatic placements. The next section we have is on locations. So where in the world are your ads gonna show up? It defaults to the United States because that's where I'm recording this video. Likely it will default to your home country. You can then adjust your targeting in a number of different ways. You can upload locations in bulk, which I'm not gonna go through right now, but you can also add individual countries. So let's say we wanted to add Canada, but you could then also navigate to any different continent and add any of the countries that were located there and that would be your first step. You can then adjust or narrow down the targeting within those countries by selecting in this field. You'll then see that there is a option for Canada and the United States. If you were to click on just the United States, it breaks down into state and DMA. So if I wanted to target individual states, I could either add or exclude Alaska, Arizona, any of the states that United States have. And then the same option is available for the DMA region. 
So if we wanted to target Albuquerque, Santa Fe, we could add or exclude those users specifically based on the demographic region that they're in. The same thing would be true for Canada or any other target country you have here. Obviously this one was broken down by region and metro, so the naming convention is a little bit different, but it operates in exactly the same way as the United States targeting does. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to remove Canada because it does impact some of the targeting options that we have in future stages. And my guess is that many of you are utilizing the targeting options in United States, so I want to make sure we're leaning into that. The next section we have is for demographic information. First, you have to choose if you are regulated content. So if you're creative or the product being advertised is required to be age restricted, whether it's gambling, alcohol, or something of the like, you need to check the box next to regulated content. So make sure that you opt into these age restrictions. My guess is that if you fall into that category, you are well aware of it because you've hit that issue with other advertising campaigns you've run in the past. So just make sure you check the box for your Snapchat ad set. Ages are pretty easy and self-explanatory. They start on the low end at 13, and you can customize by individual year increments all the way up until you hit the top end of the scale, which is going to be 50 plus. But you can again, customize the range for whatever you want it to be within the range from 13 to 50 plus. The gender targeting follows the binary model. So you can target either all genders, male only or female only. Next, you can choose your language. So you can choose from the drop down here. This certainly is not all inclusive of all of the languages that users will engage with on Snapchat, but hopefully there's at least one that both you and your target audience can speak and understand to communicate effectively. And then the last portion of the demographics is only for United States targeting currently. This is why I removed Canada as a target country earlier. So if I check the box here, Household income is still a targeting option for some of the different categories in the United States. So you can target household income between 100,000 and basically 200,000, 200,000 or more, 50,000 to just under 100,000 and under 50,000 in annual income. This is a much more limited audience than what it used to be before. And actually, if I hover over this section here, you can see that it says reach Snapchatters based on their education, income, language, marital, and parental status. Currently, we only have household income still available on this list. All of the other ones are options that have gone away over the last few years and months. Once you've determined your demographics, we can now get down into the audiences section. So the first is going to be predefined audiences, and these are audiences that have been built and packaged using Snapchat and third-party data. They allow you to reach people based on their online and real-world interests and behaviors. So some of these are pretty cool. If I check down into this Dropbox here, first is we have lifestyles. These are going to be, what do they like? These are based on people's long-term interests expressed by the media and places in which they are most engaged. So if I open this box here, these are again, going to be pretty high level, similar to what the content was earlier, but there are a lot more options here. You've got adventure seekers, automotive enthusiasts, beauty mavens, collegiates. People can be interested in different types of foods. So maybe they are burger lovers, pizza lovers, all sorts of different options. So depending on what type of lifestyle people have and the types of interests that they might have long-term, you can choose the ones that make the most sense for your target customer based on this list. And the second option is visitors. Where do they go? These are audiences built on the places people go while using their mobile devices. So this is one of those things that if you leave on your location services while you're either using or not using the app for Snapchat, my guess is this is how they're figuring out where you go. But this is one of the targeting options that I think is pretty cool because I don't see it anywhere else. So if I open this list, you'll see that the source of the information is from Snapchat. So this is their first party data because they own it. And then each of these different categories has a lot of different options. So let's just go into dining and nightlife. So now you can see there are groups of people who visit bars and nightclubs, which opens up into a few different options, either bars, karaoke, nightclubs, people who visit breweries on a regular basis. There are people who go to all sorts of locations, even different travel opportunities, whether it's airports, car rentals, you can even narrow down to individual theme parks, the Disney parks and hotels. So if you know the places that your target audience likes to spend time or that they visit on a regular basis, these visitor predefined audiences can be a great way to find them on Snapchat. The next option down here is going to be custom audiences. And these are audiences that you as the advertiser have created through audience match or your CRM lists. 
you've created them with engagements from Snap or the lookalikes of those different lists. And I'm not gonna go through all of these right now because we actually have another video that talks about all of the retargeting audiences that you can create on Snapchat. You can check that out at the top of the screen right now. That's gonna give you a better rundown of what each of these are than I will during this specific video. But just know that these custom audiences are going to be effectively the retargeting audiences that you've created off of multiple different sources, whether it be your pixel for website visitors, the engagement that they have with you on Snapchat, or any sort of customer list that you have uploaded via your CRM. Lastly, you get to choose whether you want to expand your audience automatically. So this will basically be Snapchat finding new users that are similar to those that are in the target audience you set up to try and help optimize performance. You can have this checkbox next to it if you wanna opt in or opt out, but there are some advanced settings that you can have here as well. You can decide whether to expand your predefined audiences only or expand your custom audiences only. Depending on how you set up your campaigns, you may or may not need to make any adjustments here. I personally don't usually have my predefined and custom audiences layered on top of each other, unless it's a lookalike audience and a predefined audience, and I'm trying to prospect users. And there, I would either opt in completely to expanding the audience, or I would completely opt out. I wouldn't choose one versus the other, but that's up to you, whichever one you wanna prefer. The last section we have for targeting is going to be the devices that your target audience is using. You first get to choose the operating system or the OS. You can opt into all, choose just Android or just iOS, basically any Apple product. And if you keep everything set at all devices, the next option you have is to choose the device makes, whether it's certain iPhones, iPads, or if you're trying to lean into any of the other brands that are on here. So there's Cricut, if you wanted to use whatever a U325AC is, you can target just those to your heart's content. But if you choose one of the different operating systems, let's say just iOS, you can see here that you can set minimums and maximums for the OS version. So if you wanna make sure that somebody has at least iOS 14.5, you can set that option here to make sure that whatever type of device that person is using is compatible with what you're promoting. The biggest thing that comes to mind here is if you're promoting an app that requires a certain level of OS, this can be a great option for you to narrow down the target audience only to the people who will get the most out of that app. For now, I'm just gonna set it back to all. Next, you can choose the connection type. Similarly, we have the option to choose all, or you can choose people that are only on their cell network or only on Wi-Fi. No matter which of these connection types you choose, you then get to select the carrier, so basically which brand of internet is being provided to that individual user. Many of these are not familiar to me, being in the US, they don't necessarily ring a bell, but I could type in one that I'm familiar with. And now AT&T for the US pops up. So if you have a set of carriers that you know the name of, and you don't wanna scroll through all of those different names, you can just start typing, opt into the specific carriers, and then you'll have a full list of only the people who are on the right operating system with the right connection type and only on the carrier networks that you choose. And that's all for the targeting options on Snapchat. As I mentioned, Many of the targeting options that used to be available on the platform have now gone away. Most of that is due to the different privacy rules and regulations rolling out with GDPR, iOS 14.5, and many other things. But there are still plenty of different ways that you can reach your target audience on Snapchat. And I think it's only going to be an increasingly valuable platform to reach new users and engage them with your brand. Hopefully I've answered any questions that you had around the targeting options for Snapchat, but just like always, if anything comes up and you have a question, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.